Hello there, this is Glenn Berry from Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to cover two queries. These will include Query 21, Memory Dump Info, and Query 22, which is Suspect Pages. This series of videos is going through the complete set of my SQL Server 2019 Diagnostic Information Queries. These queries are available for free at glensqlperformance.com resources. Please keep in mind that I have other sets of SQL Server diagnostic queries for other versions of SQL Server. The queries you see demonstrated in this video are identical or very similar to the queries you see in older versions and the same concepts apply. So let's start with Query 21. This query reads from the SysDM Server Memory Dumps DMV, which is documented here. At a high level, this query simply tells you whether you've had any memory dumps along with some useful information about them. Now let's run this query and see what it returns in more detail. So when I run this query, it comes back empty, and that's what you actually want to see in real life. Hopefully you don't have any memory dumps. Memory dumps are basically SQL Server is encountered an error that's usually severe enough to cause a memory dump, or and sometimes SQL Server will completely crash, but usually it doesn't. So you don't want to see any memory dumps. And what you would see if we did have any memory dumps is that you would see the file name and directory path of the memory dump and the date and time of the memory dump and then the size of the memory dump file. And the dump type might be a mini dump, an all thread dump, or a full dump. And the files are all going to have an extension of MDMP. And what we'll do in a second here is run it on a different server that actually does have some memory dumps so we can see what they look like. So let's run this query on a different server and see what information shows up there. So if we go ahead and run the query again, this time we've got a number of memory dumps. And you can see the complete file path to the memory dump and then when it happened and then how large the memory dump is. And if you want to drill in further, what you can do is first of all, let's take a look at the directory where these are going to. So it's your log directory for SQL Server and all your dump files are going to go there. And you can see you've got a text file right here and then you have a log file and then you have the actual mini dump file that's 28 megabytes in size in this case. So you would want to send all of that to Microsoft if you opened a support case. But in the meantime, you can go ahead and open up the text file and the log file. And if you know what you're doing, you can open up the mini dump file. But we'll skip that for now. And we're going to take a look at the dump file. And it shows the current time that it happened and a little bit of information about the dump and some information about your machine that it happened on, including how much memory it had available. And then it shows that it was a non-yielding scheduler. And that doesn't tell us very much, but that's what we see from this particular text file for that dump. And then if you look at the log file, this shows you the most recent SQL Server error log that was going on when that dump occurred. So it starts at the top when SQL Server started up and it was going through and doing all its startup activities. And that's helpful if somebody's trying to debug what might have happened because it shows like, things like startup trace flags. But anyways, if you scroll down all the way through this and down at the bottom, you get some information about that non-yielding scheduler issue. And if you are seeing dumps from SQL Server, the first thing that I would advise you to do is make sure you're up to date on your service packs and cumulative updates because a lot of times the fixes in those will fix the memory dump issue. And if you're all the way up to date, like you should be in my opinion, and you're still seeing memory dumps, if it's causing issues for your organization, then you should open a support case with Microsoft and send the dump file to them so they can look at it because a lot of times they'll find bugs in those dump files and then they'll generate a hot fix at some later date that comes out as part of a cumulative update. And if you open a support ticket, you'll get that hot fix earlier than having to wait for the cumulative update. Next, we'll take a look at query number 22, suspect pages. This query reads from the suspect pages table in the MSDB system database. And this is another query that you want to come back empty. But if it does not come back empty, that means you've got some issues with 823 errors or 824 errors or bad checksums or torn pages. And if you ever have any rows in this table, you need to do further investigation to make sure there's not other issues going on. And usually the errors that show up in this table are caused by IO subsystem issues. So after all that, let's go ahead and run this and see if it's empty on my instance or not. 
So if I run this, it comes back empty. And if it wasn't empty, it would show you the database name where the error occurred, and then the file ID, whether it was one of the data files or a log file, and the page ID, and the event type, and the error count, and then the last time that that row was updated, because what will happen is SQL Server will insert a row into this table when it encounters an error, and then sometimes the error is corrected by database mirroring or by running DBCC check DB, so it updates the status of that. And this table only holds 1,000 rows. So as a DBA, you need to check this. And if you get anywhere close to 1,000 rows, you probably have some pretty serious I.O. issues. But if you are getting lots of errors here, you need to make sure you delete old rows so that you never get to 1,000 rows in here. To be honest, I very rarely ever see any rows come back from this, which is a good thing. That's what you want to see. And then finally, there's a really good KB article that explains this in more detail that I have linked right down here at the bottom of this query. This is Glenn Berry, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like more content like this because it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.